So today's live is uh, very special. Just let me, because a lot of you keep asking me about infertility and PCOS, PCOD. Thank you so much, uh, Vanya, for that beautiful comment. So a lot of you keep asking me about PCOD, PCOS, infertility, secondary infertility, weight loss, obesity, and so many different topics. And because I'm not an expert at these topics. I thought that it would be best if I call somebody who could really help us with these issues. So today we have with us Dr. Mahesh Jayaraman, and he's an expert. And let me just see if he's here so that I can quickly add him. Okay. Let me just quickly send him a request. A request. Let's hope he joins, and he'll be answering all the questions related to PCOD. Okay, so he's here. Yes. Uh, hi, doctor. And uh, before we start, I just wanted to give a small introduction, just for our audience to know about what you do. So, Doctor Mahesh Jayaraman, he's the co-founder of uh, Sepalika, which is a women hormone fertility uh, clinic. and they have actually helped thousands of uh, patients uh, overcome issues like pcod pcos infertility secondary infertility cystic acne obesity and also you know very painful irregular periods so all of these issues and you've also successfully helped many couples actually naturally conceive even after going through several failed iui and ief because ivf because i was going through your page and i saw some cases and it's very inspiring to see that and it's all naturally done so that's very uh, it's quite amazing i would say and also dr mahesh jayaraman he is a functional hormone expert and he is a master of blood chemistry functional blood chemistry analysis from a very reputed institute in usa so i am not very sure about what this really means or what it is really so i would love for you to tell us a little about sepalika and how do you really help uh, all these parents fantastic thanks so much for the opportunity riddhi i know the lovely work that you do so um, everybody uh, thanks so much for tuning in and the work that we do at sepalika is primarily to make people as healthy hormonally and as naturally fertile as possible and the way that we do it is in part with that you know mouthful degree of mind that you had uh, you know sort of saying i don't know what this is and i don't blame you at all so functional blood chemistry analysis means you take somebody's normal blood tests but you don't analyze it the way a normal conventional doctor would you try and understand all the other systems and how they are interplaying with each other that's why it's called functional so from a functional point of view blood chemistry simply means a blood test or a lab test and analysis is what it is so okay. to you know jump straight into what you said for example we've had women let's say i'll give you a one example i really like to quote because it immediately helps people understand what we do she was a case of infertility had been through many rounds of iui ivf etc but when she came to us we noticed that she had a history of a gallbladder removal now her gynec must have thought how is this relevant in anyway? gallbladder ka what does it have to do with the reproductive system and yet from a functional point of view from a functional medicine point of view we know that gallbladder is responsible for digesting and produce digesting fat and producing cholesterol from it and what many women don't know is that all our reproductive hormones are made from cholesterol so the steroidal hormones you know so which is why we do, we are not in favor of you know statin drugs and reducing fats and so on because uh, what happens is from cholesterol a mother hormone called pregnenolone is made and from pregnenolone testosterone estrogen progesterone all these hormones that are gynec speak about all of this is made from cholesterol so if a lady doesn't have a gallbladder she can't digest fat can't create cholesterol how will she make estrogen how will she have regular periods how will she ovulate so all we did with her was of course there was some other basic work we did but one of the key interventions with her was to give her a 10 rupee tablet called uni enzyme which helps you digest fats and as right. soon as she began digesting fats in about 2 3 months time yes 
नेचुरल प्रोसेसेस डू टेक टाइम इट्स नॉट लाइक अ आईवीएफ वी एफ साइकिल की आज बुलाया पंप यू विथ हॉर्मोन फिफ्टीन डेज वी आर हार्वेस्टिंग एग्स इट्स नॉट हाउ इट गोज बट गिव वेन वी गेव हर बॉडी अ चांस एंड वी गेव इट द राइट डाइजेस्टिव एबिलिटी it automatically created cholesterol the cholesterol created estrogen progesterone her cycles became normal she conceived and uh, i think her baby must be two now so this is how you know functional approach to any kind of hormonal or fertility issue can give you very different answers from what your regular gynec said and this is what sepalika does you come with pcod you come with infertility any of these we go to your root causes are you eating the right foods are you digesting them well is your body using them well and therefore when we give you fixes it takes a little time but the fix is a long term fix it isn't like putting a bandaid on the problem so that's what we do okay this is so great you know i got to learn something new that fat is digested into cholesterol and then the cholesterol is producing all those reproductive hormones that we need so it's so important for us to actually understand the issue and it could be unique for every uh, mother i would say right also the other question which i got like you put up a q and a box and this was something that i received was uh, secondary infertility so sometimes you know when we get married the first time when we conceive it's a very smooth process but second time that you know for mother has waited a few years after having a first child and now she suddenly feels that okay now i'm ready for my second child and in between there has been a gap of a few years she is finding it difficult to conceive so is it possible that first time you can conceive very easily and second time it can just get a little more difficult what a fantastic question because we get so many cases like this and it's especially focused because what happens is you know even the family feels ki pehli baar to we did everything naturally you know why are we getting into this whole thing next time you know and then they get increasingly frustrated in fact you know again there's a recent example lady at 28 had had her first baby now you know they waited for the baby to be at least about 6 years old or so mother reentered her career after 3 years of looking after the child and you know everything was now settling down nicely house had been bought you know so they are kind of settled and they are ready to you know for the child to have a sibling but now remember it's a good 6 7 years since then right and now the mother is actually closer to 35 and at 35 she may suddenly realize that she's got in this particular lady's case her amh had come really low which means you know she doesn't have as many immature eggs or follicles so every period we release one egg woman releases one egg which is capable of being fertilized by a sperm and creating one baby but as women age the number of eggs left in their ovary ages faster than the rest of their body ages because you know obviously you will live up to you know 80 or 100 if you have the right genes but you can only reproduce maximum till the age of 35 to 40 right so that's going to be uh, up to the time a woman can safely have a child so pregnancies after that begin to get trickier so therefore a woman's body begins to have fewer and fewer eggs that's what happened with this lady so she had a left small uh, ovary that had become small and a right fallopian tube was blocked so it was a very difficult case because you know even if the right ovary releases an egg there's no tube to take it the opposite tube is open and you know this was the problem and she came to us because obviously her gynec felt ki you know this is conventional stuff is not working and one round multiple rounds of iu had had failed and one ivf had also failed and our work with her was again to say what has happened to your body in the last 7 years so look at your insulin resistance has that gone worse so you know how's your fasting blood sugar doing how's your thyroid doing are you getting enough proteins in your diet see as we age all our bodies need repair and upkeep and protein is what our body uses to do that repair now will your body do its own repair or will it use it to create a child because all new cells have to be created from proteins so somewhere nature will always prioritize you over a baby it's always preservation then procreation right. so if you don't have enough energy for preservation nature will not let the second baby happen so easily so give it the raw materials again give it the right conditions and we tell everybody nature has no other rule for human beings you be happy and healthy you create the next generation only two rules everything else is man made career gaadi bangla nature doesn't want you to have any of that so right. if nature is not letting you have a second child don't worry so much about the reproductive system look at your own lifestyle 
do have i gone low on vitamins and minerals have we worked really hard with the first child spent sleepless nights have we you know literally burnt our resources health wise in getting to where we have gotten then give yourself a little break little preparatory time the second child will happen as well so this lady is now in her third trimester the one that i described so now she's 35 36 and she's in her third trimester nice healthy pregnancy progress till now so my next question to you is that you know like a lot of times like ivf and do i feel like you rightly mentioned but is there a chance that you know even natural uh, treatment could fail like sure this rate like very high what is the no. usual rate yeah so this is you know um uh, this is a very difficult question to answer only because once you say natural it means ki aap you come with any kind of condition i take you into the pool right so natural could mean something as severe as let's say for example blocked fallopian tubes okay. if your fallopian tubes are blocked we all know that when an egg is released during the middle of the period it has to go into the fallopian tube where the sperm will meet it and create a baby now if a fallopian tube is blocked will natural treatment work i will say in 90% of the cases no and the reason for that is you cannot handle structural problems with just diet you know if there is been a clear blockage of a fallopian tube and people don't understand how delicate these structures are see your ovaries are the size of walnuts and fallopian tubes are coming out of that in a very small portion of that walnut so imagine how thin it is so once that tube is damaged it's not possible to correct it only with diet but i'll tell you still why diet helps uh, natural things help so people come to us with failed ivf why did they go for ivf many times it's because fallopian tube is blocked if fallopian tube is blocked and ivf still fails the question to be asked is why did ivf fail and the answer is because ivf can only use the egg and the sperm which is from the mother and the father if your own health is not good enough to produce excellent egg and excellent sperm the embryo is not good enough to finally be put in because all they can do is mix your material create a baby and put it back into your womb if your own health was not good enough and your egg was poor quality or the gentleman's sperm is poor quality you will not have ivf success without that natural support so when couples come to us after three rounds of failed ivf we still get them success in the next round of ivf if Not. there is a structural problem we can't fix the structure but we can fix the tissue so that your uh, success rates are higher right got it so you fix the issue so that the ivf is a success correct and people don't know really this is uh, sorry uh, you know sort of uh, rambling a little but ivf success rate is 1 in 3 per round people don't know this so that means if three couples undergo one round of ivf and 1 and 1/2 lakhs at least spent two of them will be disappointed only one will have a success and this is for pregnancy this is not for birth rate after okay. pregnancy also many couples lose babies in the first trimester so the odds that ivf gives you people think ivf means pakka success that's not how it goes you have multiple rounds it's only at the sixth round of ivf that you have a 65% success rate so that's a lot of money lot of hormones lot of time spent so that's important context and i know a few yeah i have a few friends who have gone through a few and it can also be mentally very exhausting physically also because it's not like it's without pain there is a certain amount of that i went through a round of i like i have a child and it was through ivf treatment but my baby isn't growing well so is can there be a link between ivf and baby not growing well or it's just uh, so the uh, could we just clarify if the baby is being delivered and then growth is not good or is is it not baby is not growing well in the womb so sarika if you can just mention that if you're still around whether it was if the baby is here or is it still i think the baby is here is what she means but she's in my okay. baby grow well okay no so uh, you know honestly from a very scientific point of view we don't see a difference between ivf babies and natural babies because ivf also selects carefully for the right embryo etc there could be other reasons why the baby is not growing well and therefore you must consult a good 
child specialist even a good ayurveda has many many solutions for babies that don't grow well you know you don't have to resort to allopathic protein powders and things there are natural solutions for babies to meet milestones as well so i would suggest that for this lady right also we have this other question from priya and she say that can ovarian cysts disrupt in conceiving can it be like an can obstruct in conceiving yes it can indeed obstruct conception especially if the ovarian cyst is a blood filled cyst or an endometrial cyst there are different kinds of cysts that happen water filled cysts in ovaries will resolve by themselves generally in about 6 weeks time but an endometrial cyst which is a blood filled cyst may obstruct an egg being released from the ovary see like i said an ovary is so small it's just a walnut size now imagine on top of that there is a huge blood filled cyst that's taking up space how will other eggs mature you know it's like literally there's no space for them to do that so it can be there and it must be addressed either through medication or surgery before you try for conception if indeed there are repeated failures so this ovarian cyst can also be uh, like treated naturally or uh... Yes indeed ovarian yeah ovarian cysts can also be treated naturally but again <coughs> there isn't a one size fits all answer some cysts can be so large that there is a risk of the ovary twisting on itself so okay. this is this is called torsion and this can be a life threatening thing so uh, in such cases one should not try natural treatment one should take the allopathic option and get it surgically removed but smaller size cysts working with good ayurvedic doctors and homeopathic doctors you certainly can reverse right right and sepalika also helps with the same like do you also help uh, uh, with yeah. the same Right. Yes um it depends upon the kind of cyst like for example polycystic ovary disease is something that we help with for sure and when somebody is trying to conceive and they have come with a cyst then we certainly support them with the dietary supplements the diet etc etc but if they are like on a clock and they say we want to conceive within 6 months and there is a cyst then we always involve a local doctor as well who needs to you know support that whole process see um, again i'll just take one minute to explain to people cysts usually grow because there is a hormonal imbalance cysts are formed by hormonal imbalance in a 30 day period cycle of a lady 14 days are supposed to be ruled by the hormone estrogen estrogen likes to grow everything estrogen matures an egg estrogen forms the inner wall of the uterus for your baby etc on day 15 once an egg is released the second hormone called progesterone is supposed to come in and control estrogen stop it from growing all the things including the inner wall of the uterus more eggs etc many women don't have the second half hormone progesterone working well because of this estrogen keeps growing this uh, follicle which then ends up becoming a cyst so many cysts are due to a hormonal imbalance and again we we'll give you a very practical very easy way to fix this at at least the base level first level do seed cycling seed cycling is just four seeds which you can use in two halves of the cycle to achieve hormonal balance and begin to treat things like cysts so here's a simple thing to remember from the first day of your period to the day 14 of your period remember the acronym flap par par padana flap f l a p okay so that's flax seeds and pumpkin seeds take one tablespoon level tablespoon of flax seed one level tablespoon of pumpkin seeds put it into a little vessel soak it overnight next morning throw away the water chew the seeds really well and swallow it it's not Black. going to taste <laughs> this is in the first 15 days correct correct of oh. the period what does it do flax and pumpkin supports the work of estrogen and make sure that estrogen is able to do its job well once you hit the middle of the period cycle assuming it's a 30 day cycle then from the next from day 15 to day 28 or 30 start the next acronym remember suzy so you know i ask people to remember suzy is flapping her wings and flying so there's a flap and then there's a suzy suzy is sunflower seeds and sesame seeds again one level tablespoon each same process soak it overnight throw the water chew the seeds really well and eat it don't go for taste neither of these taste well so okay. you know it's it's purely for health but such a beautiful effect you will get in the second half when you follow the suzy 
Suzy makes sure that estrogen doesn't run uncontrolled in the second half. It removes excess estrogen, so you will not get bloating before your periods. You will not get, uh, you know, pimples, acne, because pimples and acne are happening because the body is trying to remove excess estrogen. Estrogen ka kam khatam, remove the estrogen, but it's unable to do it. So when it is unable to remove it through your normal digestion, through your urination, feces, etc., it comes to the skin from where it's trying to remove it. Skin is also. an excretory organ that's why we sweat there right so suzy will help you remove excess estrogen in the second half and it will help to increase progesterone in the second half so if if, if you just do flap and suzy within 3 or 4 cycles people notice a proper even shrinkage of size of the cyst as long as it hasn't grown beyond a particular size or it is in blood filled normal cysts will easily respond within one or two cycles all your pms symptoms will improve and your hormonal balance will come back so you know try this it costs nothing it's simple to do at home hello thing to try actually okay and that brings me to my next question and this is uh, less related to infertility actually it could also be because weight can also be a sort of conceiving so a lot of uh, mothers have actually asked me this that you know like with age they feel that the metabolism goes down and that is why they are really finding it difficult to lose weight after having a second child the first time they had a child it was very simple for them to get rid of all that excess weight but the second time they had a child it was difficult so can age be an issue when it comes to weight loss after having your second child absolutely and you know yes uh, the answer is that yes it can indeed have an impact and the second part of the answer is yes you can fix it too right that's the more important part because what happens is we don't realize you know everybody thinks ki acha uh, you know once the baby is born especially during the pregnancy itself the family ends up overfeeding the mother you know so there is this proverb that we have that you have to eat for two and this eat for two is a bad idea from a quantity perspective you have to eat for two from a quality perspective remember for the most part of the pregnancy the baby is no larger than the size of a melon small melon that means you have to eat for one human being and one melon sized person not for two full human beings that's the first mistake that people do so they end up with gestational diabetes hypothyroid all this you know many women will tell you mere first baby ke baad i became hypothyroid my thyroid medicine started after first baby this happens because you have not taken care of your lifestyle during the pregnancy you've overfed yourself many times and if there was minor hypothyroidism you didn't treat it at that time so you ended up you know sort of literally arriving after pregnancy with a metabolism that's gone low now what happens now you begin to breastfeed so now again the you know the mother the in-laws everybody is going to feed you again so here comes the panjeeri here comes you know all of those lactation foods yes. and again here is a tip for all new mothers panjeeri is excellent it's a beautiful lactation food but the trick in the panjeeri is the gond people forget the gond you know which is the heat producing element that is added into the panjeeri because all of us have you know decent uh, disposable income these days we all think that it's the dry fruits and the ghee and the wheat that is the main part of the panjeeri actually because the mother who has recently given birth has very low digestive fire hum kehte hain in ayurveda we say jataragni kam ho gayi so the agni has come down because she's it's a momentous event she's just given birth to a child there is a huge vacuum in her lower abdomen and vacuum is nothing but vata so vata has increased to such an extent that pitta or the fire has been suppressed so this is a bad time to give the lady foods that are hard to digest and wow. yet she needs nutrition to give you know proper milk so what do you do that is why our ancestors had the panjeeri but the panjeeri the the gond which comes with it that produces heat by itself so when it brings its own fire nutrition is great but if you give a mother panjeeri which is only naam ke vaste little bit of gond and the rest is all hard to digest you know the dates and the dry fruits and everything it's just going to add to her weight it's all pure sugar where is it going to go and she doesn't have the ability to digest it so it's all going to end up being fat around her abdomen and here's the double whammy right 
once a lady begins to age a little over 30 any fat she accumulates around her waist itself begins to produce a weak form of estrogen called estrone and that estrone makes it very difficult to lose weight so it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle so what do women do women end up going on crash diets and over exercising ya to gym join kar lo ya to you know then you go for all these uh, severe kind of restricted uh, weight diets unfortunately abs are only made in the kitchen abs are never made in gyms people keep thinking ki gym jayenge to weight loss ho jayega we all our weight loss clients at sepalika we only make them do 30 to 40 minutes of walk Five to six times a day. Movement is what is needed, not hardcore burning of calories. People keep thinking it's a calorie in, calorie out. That's not what it is. It's a balance of foods and it's movement. So make sure you get the movement. And little tricks can help you lose weight after your first child. Right. So for example, when a thali is put in front of you, make sure that it looks like this. This is an again ideal thali. We tell people. Divide it into four quarters. First two quarters must be vegetable, raw vegetable, cooked vegetable. So one salad, one sabzi, and the sabzi should preferably be green, right? We're not talking alu here. So above the surface sabzi, and we have got some salad. Then the remaining two quarters, one quarter should be protein. If you're vegetarian, it can be paneer, it can be moat, it can be dal, whatever you like. If you're non-vegetarian, then a portion of the meat over there. Only one fourth, the last one should be your grain carbohydrates. So either roti or rice. Now India me kya hota hai? Aksar half of it is the roti or the rice, and everything else crowded in the upper half. So when you do this, this imbalance leads makes it very difficult to lose weight. Why does that happen? That's because when you eat grains, grains immediately convert into sugar, and the sugar spikes insulin, and the hormone insulin only stores fat. it doesn't let you burn it so yeah. you must you know eat from an insulin friendly point of view eat this quarter wala plate this is number 1 number 2 within that same plate here's another intelligent way you can reduce your weight and this is again chamatkari start with the salad and start with the protein your stomach feels a little fuller your sh- blood sugar doesn't spike like crazy so by the time you get to the roti and the sabzi your body your stomach already has enough protein and it's concentrating on digesting that so it doesn't lead to immediate sugar spike and along with that your insulin won't spike and the same meal will leave you thinner than it did earlier because we have changed the order in which you are eating the foods right so simple things like this can make a huge difference to a mother so it is true there is a hormonal component of after the first child it being difficult to lose weight but it's not that difficult to do you just have to do it a little intelligently and it will work and last one don't guilt eat bachche ne nahi khaya you take that thing and you finish it you don't realize the number of times young mothers are eating leftovers or from somebody else's plate yeah you know just to finish the food and you don't count it in your calories you don't realize you've done it bachcha aadha roti chhod ke chala gaya aapne le liya you know you don't realize that you're kind of slowly piling up stuff without realizing it if you are a little conscious of a few of these things you can go a long way in this right yeah i'm just loving this conversation also the way you are explaining how the cycle works it's uh, definitely a lot to learn from you and my next uh, question is around pcos and pcod which is like very common in women these days so my first question is that you know let's say if a mother is trying to conceive and pcos and pcod could actually be a problem so how does she identify that this is something that's making it difficult for her to conceive and sure. yeah yeah so pcod when we diagnose it medically we say that there is a three part criteria and two out of those are such that you can tell yourself okay so the first one is that you either have on ultrasound you can see pcos okay? so that's we'll keep that aside because that is a doctor has to tell you that the two other criteria you can know yourself number 1 if your periods are getting delayed and getting delayed every time right so um, you've got like a 45 days kabhi 60 days kabhi 70 days if that is happening to you there is a good chance that that could be a pcos kind of situation the second sign that you may notice is pcos is primarily happens because you have high male hormones so if you have 
excess facial or body hair or if you have cystic acne that comes every period cycle then there is again a high chance that PCOS may be the reason why you are not able to conceive of course it would be best to get a di- proper diagnosis from a doctor but these are two crucial signs um delayed or irregular periods and high levels of male hormones showing as symptoms in excess body hair and cystic acne that could tell you that there is this issue also like what's the basic difference between pcos and pcod because mostly you know it's used interchangeably but yeah. i mean they're different uh, so what yeah. yeah so actually the truth is that they are used interchangeably and they aren't really different so what they do is yeah so pcod is become like a, a disease diagnosis which allows insurance company to refund etc uh, you know it's that word disease then means that they are allowed to refund whereas with a syndrome it can sometimes be a little tricky honestly the truth is that these are used interchangeably across the world and syndrome in some places is used for a milder or early stage of the disorder whereas disease is used for a more advanced or confirmed stage of the disorder that's the only difference otherwise they are the same so pcos if you have pcod then you definitely have pcos absolutely you are right about that you have pcos and if you intervene early then you can actually prevent pcod from happening Oh, fantastic that is the best interpretation i've heard till date you are absolutely on the money thank you so much also the next question that i have for you so when you are actually like you know helping a mother conceive so are you just working with the mother or the father is also involved because you know there could be an issue with the sperm quality or the speed of sperm so you have to work they have to work together as a team right because your thing is about women so i was very curious whether you are just working with the mother or you are also involving the father in the whole process no so this is the only program at sepalika where men are welcome not just welcome but compulsory so sepalika does not work with a single uh, you know sort of partners only um, from a point of view of saying that the man is equally responsible so in fact we run an egg freezing program as well for ladies who haven't yet found a life partner they want to focus on their career and yet want to you know make sure that they freeze their eggs in time so this is the only case where we don't work with couples but we work with young ladies other than that anybody who's coming to us as a couple and the man thinks that you know the lady is entirely to blame many times and i'm not just making this up to sound like a you know equal opportunity labor or something we medically find that nobody went and checked with the man because they first checked with the women and once the woman had a problem everybody said it's the woman's fault and nobody went to the man only. whereas if you had checked both of them you might have found a way to optimize both and remember 50% genes come from the father 50% from the mother if an embryo transfer for example is failing again and again in ivf why would we assume that it's entirely the egg's fault it's just foolish and not just that remember a man can truly be a very active and positive partner in this whole journey because remember the testing for the man is non invasive it's a sperm donation it's not a painful process there's no injection there's nothing being pulled out there's no you know transvaginal ultrasound for which you know things are uh, have to go inside orifices so none of that the lady goes through so much trouble and so much thing with a smile on her face because obviously they want a baby and the man you know feels his uh, many times his masculinity is under question just if you ask him to do a sperm test you know they will tell me nahi nahi 3 saal pehle my sperm was fine i said 3 saal pehle and today there is you know 36 months of stress in between this you have gone to work you've got promotions you've got demotions you know uh, you fought at traffic signals there's hundreds of things that have happened to you you know right. food was not there we went through corona who's to tell what was there 3 years ago so we always say the man has a huge role to play and once you test the man and you're absolutely sure that he's fine we still super optimize the man's health because not everything can be seen in just a sperm report you know we always say dna factors are unseen and you must in a, once a lady is ready so for example ours is a 6 month program for man and woman 
so we will always say even if it takes 3 months for us to get the lady cycles back into you know gear and make sure she's ready and we'll give you the green light to try on certain days of the month etc in the next 3 months i can't wait to optimize the man on that day ki 3 mahina ho gaya the lady is ready now i find out there is a you know sperm motility issue morphology issue count issue i said what does it mean it makes no sense and again because sepalika is a natural program and there are no chemical medicines very rarely we use them only you know absolutely we are forced to which means that what are we giving the man to improve his health again the same excellent diet he will feel more energy he will lose weight he will look younger so where is the downside so what we call treatment really is like improving your health so much that a baby is the natural outcome so there is no side effects of the man getting treated even if he is uh, you know otherwise okay but can do better right perfect so yes that's uh, great also one last question that i have for you is like a lot of working mothers are now opting to freeze their eggs like you rightly mentioned so what would be the right age to do that like you know when should you really decide that you know now is the time or now i'm like you know now i cannot delay it further you know this is like my last uh, year to freeze my eggs or you know if you are planning to do it uh, like from the very beginning if you are very clear that you don't want to have a child now but you want to have it much later so what would be a good time to actually decide and do this yeah this is a very tricky question but also a very very relevant question we get lots of young women these days you know coming to us to do this and our answer is always the sooner the better and what do i mean by that when you come to us at 35 because suddenly now you know you're having conversations with your mother and facebook has heard that you're having a conversation with your mother so it starts popping up egg freezing you know articles for you and things like that you probably reached an age where your egg quality is already gone down So a recently published study showed that in white caucasians where even up to the age of 35 to 38 their eggs were still of a peak quality in indian women that was at a lower age so 28 to 33 is roughly what we're looking at for indian women from whatever data that we currently have so i'd say the sooner you make this call if you're very clear like you said at 28 i'm clear i want to build my career for another 7 years 8 years i'm only then going to decide on a life partner better to do it at 28 and another beauty of this is egg freezing and whatever we know from pure scientific data frozen egg uh, you know transfers seem to have a as good if not better success rate than even natural fertility so if at an age of 33 you want to conceive and the choice is between using your own natural eggs at 33 versus your own eggs from a 28 year old you the 28 year old you is going to do better that's what the data is suggesting as of now so i'd say the sooner you do it the better but the process is the same again optimize your diet optimize your vitamins your minerals your give your egg the best chance to be a baby even 7 years from now or you know ayurveda i'll just give you that quick thing ayurveda says egg is a final product of seven stages of purification it says the food that you eat becomes rasa or uh, chai that is the you know jab chaba ke pet mein jata hai that is rasa from rasa it becomes rakta or blood from rakta it becomes mamsa or flesh from mamsa it becomes medha or fat from medha it becomes asti or bone <clears throat> and from asti it becomes asti majja or bone marrow and the final seventh conversion is to egg or to sperm depending on female and male so that many purifications it undergoes and because nature wants the next generation to get the best of you so it purifies it seven times before it reaches there now you know some people will say this is all metaphor thodi na bone marrow se sperm banta that's not the point what ayurveda is trying to indicate is the healthier the food you eat at the start the healthier will be your sperm or your egg at the other end so follow the same process even for egg freezing and do it sooner rather than later also one uh, last question just you know out of curiosity and i just thought of it is that you know like, let's say you know if somebody freezes her egg is there still a chance that you know it might not fertilize is is that that happen that you freeze your egg and uh, i don't know it yeah i just thought no. of it 
or no, I just... so it ma yeah in general it it should not happen because eggs are selected carefully before we undergo freezing only good quality eggs only eggs that look the proper size the proper quality etc are frozen but sometimes if there's you know the lab hasn't stored it properly that's one possibility second thing is also see remember there's still another male partner na? that partner still has to fertilize this egg so his sperm may not be of good enough quality you will not have finally a good embryo so those may be two reasons why it may not happen this was so fantastic and i got to learn so much and you explained it so simply and beautifully definitely getting you back because i just have so many more questions but instagram has a limit so i'll have to let you go and it was an absolute pleasure and all of you who are watching this you must definitely follow sipalika if this is something that you are interested in and if you want to learn more about this they have some amazing content for you to actually help yourself naturally at home and of course if you feel that you want an expert advice i think dr manish would be the best person to reach out to so thank you so much it was an absolute pleasure and thank you so much for your time and doing this for us really really means a lot to me thank you so much. thank you thank you so much really appreciate the effort bye thank